album. So happy to meet you and so grateful to have this time with you. You're welcome. Let's get to know you a little bit. Can okay. you tell us a little bit about your background? I kind of fell into hypnosis just like I fell into my last career. Uh, I have spent decades in telecommunications. That was my, my career most of my life. And I loved it. It was great. But I also enjoyed being with people. I enjoyed talking with people, you know, getting to know them. So I started doing life coaching in the evenings. But I always felt that the life coaching didn't get into the people's soul. I wanted to get inside their soul. And life coaching, it was kind of on the surface. You got a little bit deep, but not deep enough. I knew there was something else there. I could make some changes, but I couldn't make enough. This was not a conscious thing. It was something kind of like in the back of my head. And whenever you put an intention out there to the universe, they hear you. Now at that time, that was around 2007, around then, I was also doing automatic writing. And uh, my guides were telling me uh, at that time, you're gonna be doing more of this coaching, but you're gonna be doing face to face. And I said, no way, because I was a very, kind of a very introverted person. I didn't like face-to-face -face at all. And they said, oh, and by the way, you're going to be known all around the world. And I said, well, you guys are on crack. No, <laughs> this is not happening. How could it possibly happen? I said, this is not going to happen. But my guides kept insisting that I would be doing more to help people. So fast forward a few years, I'm still doing my automatic writing. I'm still very uh, spiritually inclined, but I was also working in a field that was not spiritual. You know, this is a technical field. So I felt a, a lot of division there, you know, like how can I get myself out there? Well, life has a way of paving the way, whether you want to or not. We had a lot of things going on in my family my life changed and I had to get those, that automatic writing out into the world and kind of face my spirituality. So that was the first thing that happened in my life. I had to actually put my writing out there and tell the whole world that I was spiritual, okay? After being professional for so many years. That was my first step and people loved it. They said, oh my God, you're writing about me. And, I, and I'm like, no, this is my writing. This is about me. And that was the first time I realized that we're all one. We all are feeling the same problem. We're all um, feeling the same. So, more years progress. At that time, I was doing some exercising, some kickboxing, and I was getting injured for some reason. I never get injured. And I kept getting injured more and more. Tripped over my dogs, broke my toe, uh, messed up my knee, messed up my wrist. I was on the couch, totally unable to function. So I'm with my iPad and I find Dolores Cannon. What is this? You know? And I'm reading what she's, you know, I'm reading, you know, all about this quantum healing hypnosis technique and I'm going, oh my God, that's the next step to coaching. She's actually getting into people's soul and able to help them. So I said, I'm taking the class, you know? So I, I, I did the online class. And I'm not one to do anything halfway. When I'm doing something, I do it all the way. So I even had the website, my website up before I even finished my class. I said, no, I'm doing this, I'm diving in. And um, I started practicing immediately. As soon as, as soon as I got my little piece of paper saying I had passed my test, which wasn't an easy test, um, I started practicing on the weekends and practicing and practicing. Now the good thing about what I was doing at the time, I was working for the University of Miami and I did all the recordings for the University of Miami. You know, the, the greetings, you know, thank you for calling the office of so-and-so, you know, press one, press two. So I had spent years developing my voice already, okay? And that's why I say nothing, nothing happens by accident because you're, you fall into the right jobs and things are, are, are being put into place for you. I already had the voice. 
to start doing this. The only thing I didn't have is the manner in which to uh, go along with what uh, the, the quantum healing technique is all about. Dolores Cannon uh, was very, very adamant about the way you uh, speak with the client, how you conduct your session in, this, in, in this sort of the cadence that you, you do with your voice. And, and um, at first, I was terrible. Okay, I was terrible. Everybody who starts new is terrible because you don't really know. But I had some, some coaching from other practitioners who kind of told me, hey, you know, you're being a little bit too assertive or you're, you know, too strong and you need to fix that. And, and I, I started working with my voice. And I also speak Spanish. So I was not only helping the American communi community, but I was also doing the Hispanic community. So I was like, able to also mm -hmm. practice what I was doing in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So what happened, and why I mention that, is because I have a colleague who we both went to class together. His name is Antonio Sanjo. Antonio and I became best friends. We speak to each other every night. We coach each other. And he said, Alba, there's this guy who is in uh, Colombia. His name is Aurelio Mejia, who does hypnosis too. Why don't you watch his videos? And we st started picking up some of the techniques that he was doing. And that was the forgiveness work. Does he actually show his techniques oh, in a video? Yeah, he does, he wow. does it, but wow. um, his, is a, his is a clinical. Mm. Yeah. He's a clinical hypnotherapist, so he gets into a lot of phobias, a lot of um, issues with people. Okay. That's not the type of work I like to get into. That's why I call my work the, the, the journey of, you know, the spiritual awakening. And, um, so we started watching him and we started seeing how he was doing the techniques. But I realized that in order for me to do what I did, I had to become a hypnotherapist. In my state of Florida, you need to become a hypnotherapist in order to do therapy. And this is what Aurelio Mejia was doing. So I became, um, it took me you know, over a year of classes to become a hypnotherapist. And I was incorporating not only the techniques that Dolores Cannon was teaching me, or taught me, um, but also Aurelio Mejia's work of forgiveness, of entity releasement work, and also the work that I was learning from my hypnotherapy school. So I was incorporating that. Plus, when I, put my when I do these sessions, I put myself into a hypnotic state myself. So I'm channeling my higher self. So I'm basically on autopilot. This stuff is just coming through me. So I don't know what I'm going to say next. Mm -hmm. It just happens. So using all of these techniques plus my own guides taking me on my journey, mm -hmm. this is how I developed my technique. Telepathy. Mm -hmm. It's like they're secretly doing it. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to receive that? I like it. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm grateful that they do that. Mm -hmm. They kind of like do it under the table without like our commanders knowing. Mm. Like if they get to us, we could eventually one day get to the rest of us, or the rest of the threat mm -hmm. Let them know that. We're just being controlled. Mm -hmm. We're just being used. We're capable of so much more. Mm -hmm. So, what are you learning from these reptilians? I mean, love. What, they're the, teaching me these, love. They're teaching you. The amphibious people teach you love. Yeah, they have no reason to. Most we do is take. Mm -hmm. They're just so generous. Give it a slight love. Mm -hmm. How is that affecting you, Earl? Oh, it's teaching me. I feel it. I feel the vibrations inside me. Mm -hmm. it makes me dislike being a reptile even more. 
it's not necessarily big reptilian that's bad. It's that that we don't know how to change. We don't. It's born into us. Mm-hmm. We're born this way. Mm-hmm. We don't know any better. So now, as you feel this love coming through you, how does that feel? Oh, it's so amazing. Feel it. I do. I do. I feel it. It's my whole body. Mm -hmm. Absorb it. Make it yours. Feel that love. It's so amazing. Mm -hmm. They're such good things. They're so positive. They have so much to give. So much love. So much to share. But all we want is weapons. All we want is the stupid technology where they could show us so much more. But we just want crap. We want crap. But I'm not in command. Mm-hmm. I just do what I'm told. Who is in commander? Oh, oh man. He's white reptilians. Mm-hmm. They're, they're high up. They're, they're mean. You're mean? They're really mean. Mm-hmm. Like if they knew what I was feeling right now and what they're giving me, what would oh, happen? they'd probably kill me. They'd mm-hmm. probably. They'd kill me. Mm-hmm. In a normal past life regression, you may go from. Um, you know, like in QHHT, the, the normal um, way that you do a QHHT session, for example, is you land in a, in a, in a, in a place. We don't know where we're going to land, okay? And we go usually to, um, we look at our clothing, what are you wearing, what do you look like? You usually start that because in past life regressions, that's what you have to do. You have to get yourself acclimated with your body. Then you move on. What are you doing? Where are you? You look around, okay? Um, I'm in a place that has big buildings. and So you start describing the place. Then you may close that scene and you go now to maybe the place where you live. Describe the place where you live. You can kind of get the person's social status from that. Um, you can find out if they're living by themselves with others. You may then take them to a meal to where they're eating something. Well, what are you eating with? Are you eating with pewter plates? Are you eating with your hands? Do you have wooden spoons? Is there anybody sitting around the table with you? Okay, so you kind of get a little bit more. Then you may take them to where they work or what do they spend their time doing. So there is a way that QHHT takes you through a past life regression. After that, you take them to the last day of their life. Then you move on perhaps to a next life. Okay, so that's a normal QHHT session. And after that, you may go one, two, three lives like that. And then we call in what Dolores Cannon called the subconscious. Now she, she said that word in hypnotherapy, subconscious means something else. But I call it the higher self. You call in the higher self, there's a protocol as to how you call in the higher self, uh, asking for permission. And then the higher self answers the questions that the person brings. Now, the higher self is you. There's nobody else in the room here, okay? Many people, when they go to a QHHT session and they're not explained this, may find themselves sitting there waiting for someone to take over their body and start talking for them. That's not what it's like, okay? You're not a puppet. No one's going to move your mouth for you. So what I tell my, all of my clients is it's the first thing that pops into your mind. And you channel your higher self all the time, especially when you give advice. But each and every one of my sessions is different. So I can't tell you this is the protocol that I do. It's what my higher self and the gang, you know, of guides and angels that I have, that's what they decide is going to happen today. So I don't know how my sessions are going to go. I can't tell you this is how I do it. How your session, and just talk about your process and your, mm-hmm. uh, your practice. The way that I do my practice now, I have such a, a wide 
audience now because my YouTube videos are out there. So this is very similar to the QHHT process, but it's really what most hypnotherapists do. Find out a little bit about your life, what's going on, who are the players, because I don't want to be caught not knowing who somebody is when you start talking about them. You know, you may be in a past life or something, and I'll say, you know, take a look at somebody's eyes and tell me who they are. Oh, it's Joey. Who's Joey? Okay. So we talk a little bit just to find out who the players are and what they mean to you. Okay. Joey may be your favorite nephew who means a lot to you. Well, maybe Joey was your, your son in another life, and that's why you have that connection. So we get the players. We, got, we, we get a little bit of background information. Um, you know, who they are, and then we go over the questions that they bring. I limit people to 20 questions. Less is, less is more because I get to play more if I have less questions. So we go over the questions, uh, why they're asking them, okay? And then I get an idea of what, of what we're going to ask. Then I spend a long time talking about hypnosis, okay? What is hypnosis? What do you think hypnosis is? Okay, everybody has a different idea. People, when they see <clears throat> somebody, uh, uh, somebody in hypnosis, they think that they're sleeping. Mm -hmm. They're not sleeping. Yeah. When you're in hypnosis, you're completely alert and conscious all the time. You know what's going on inside the room. You know what's going on outside the room. If there's people mowing the lawns, you could hear it. You're not asleep. Right. In fact, sometimes you're hyper alert. Mm -hmm. I've had people hear things that are in, on the other side of the wall that you can't hear when they're uh, talking with me, right? So I explain to them what hypnosis is. You're conscious, you're alert. It's not mind programming, so you would never say or do anything that you wouldn't normally do, okay? In fact, you could censor. You don't always have to tell me what you see in your imagination, okay? You have more, it's like you and I, Billy, are going to go to the movies today, yeah. okay? We haven't seen the trailer, mm -hmm. and I'm blind. Right. So I'm going to sit next to you and go, so what's going on? Mm -hmm. totally. Well, there's, there's, a, there, there's a cowboy on the screen. Okay, what's he doing? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, there's Indians coming. Yeah. Okay, the fact is I need to know what you, what's going on. Mm -hmm. But you can admit the fact that the Indian is on a stage. Mm -hmm which makes it completely different. So the whole idea is the more you talk, the more you're going to see. And that's what happens, the more detail they say. So I explain to people, this is what is going to happen. You're going to just describe to me what happens. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people have concerns. Well, what, what if I can't be hypnotized? Mm -hmm. I would say 90% of the population could be hypnotized. As long as you can daydream, you can be hypnotized because that's what it feels like. Right. And most of the time it's just their belief if they can or not. Exactly. You know, hypnosis is just an altered state. You are in that altered state all day long. If I look around anywhere I go, everybody's walking around with their cell phone. What do you think that is? Yeah. They're hypnotized. Yeah. They're looking at the screen. They have no idea what's going on around them. So they're already hypnotized. So they're saying, oh, I don't think I could be hypnotized. Yeah. Well, what do you do with your phone when you're online? Right. When you're watching a movie or like watching TV. You pay money to go to the movies right. to forget you're in the movie theater. Yeah. If you remember you're in the movie theater, that's a lousy movie. Totally. Right? right? If it's a, capti a captivating movie, you're going to feel the emotions. You're going to cry. Mm -hmm. You're going to laugh. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel what's going on. It's like hypnosis. When you're in your car, you're driving, you point your car in a certain direction, right. and then yeah. you're off. Mm -hmm. You're daydreaming. Yeah. Okay, what am I going to make for dinner? Or where am I going to go to for dinner tonight? Right. You know? And the scary thing is when you know this, you look around, you go, everybody else is in that it's state. Thing, yeah. <laughs> We're all on autopilot. Yeah. So that's what hypnosis feels like. You're daydreaming. So what we do, what I do, is we do some warm-up exercises before I even have them lie down on the couch. We go through certain warm-up exercises of visualization because hypnosis is like riding a bicycle. The first time you've ever ridden a bicycle, it was hard. 
You don't know how to balance. But the moment you learn how to balance, you got it. You'll never forget. Hypnosis is the same way. The first time you're hypnotized, which is what happened to you, I believe, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know what's supposed to happen, right? It feels pretty similar to daydreaming. Yeah. Is this really happening? Is it real? Mm -hmm. But once you understand what hypnosis is, what this altered state is, every time you go in and out of hypnosis, you go even deeper, faster. Mm -hmm. So now every time you go to get a session yourself, fast. Yeah, we have like a, a word on it's, now, Yeah, so. yeah, because you already, you're putting yourself into hypnosis. Yeah. So when we do all of these practice exercises, I just tell people, you're going to put yourself into hypnosis. I'm not. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we do a little visualization exercise just so that I can get myself also in sync with them because I've got to calm my di myself down. When I speak with my cl clients, I'm speaking to them like this, yeah. really fast. Excited, yeah. So I have to calm myself down in order to get into that state too. Mm -hmm. And then we're both flowing together. Yeah. And then whatever happens is gonna happen. When the veil is lifted, you will have the power to commune with the dead. They will be before you, many lost souls, fearful, who have created their own universe around them. They did not transition. And you will be frightened. And your first inclination will be to wrap yourself in fear. For some, the sense of security will be their home, and you will recreate your home. It may be your bed. It may be Jesus. You will have the ability to manifest anything. Many will be suicidal to this new ability to manifest. That is why now you should be developing your potential to connect and commune with the divine. When the veil is lifted, Many human beings will be shouting. They will all wait until the last possible moment and they will be praying in unison. And at that moment, they will find themselves. 
So there is hope. Humanity is on the brink. There is another world that depends on you now. Just as there is a group of beings that are nudging us forward to evolve. I call it the spiritual journey of forgiveness because what's holding a lot of people back is not forgiving, not forgiving yourself or others. When you don't forgive others, you're holding this stuff in your body, in your soul. And it could be stuff that happened to you when you were four years old, okay? You could have been in a school play and somebody laughed at you because you forgot your lines. And now for the rest of your life, you wonder, am I going to foul things up when I start talking? Okay? Not because you remember the play, but because you couldn't forgive yourself for that. So we dive into that. That's hypnotherapy. Okay? This is not QHHT. Okay? We're now doing therapy. Most of that does not come out of my videos. Okay? Because whenever we go through some hypnotherapy, I edit that out because it's very personal. Okay? So we do therapy to go in there and release some of that pain. And we do some role changes and things that are done in, in hypnotherapy. And we, we assist them with that. But there's more about forgiveness. And that is usually when they, they have done something themselves to others. Perhaps someone who's already died. Okay? I didn't talk to my mom. Or I, didn't, I wasn't there for my mom when she died. And I'm holding this terrible guilt. Okay? So that's when we get the mom to come in. Yeah, that's beautiful. Because it's like dealing with things in the past, in the moment, and mm -hmm. so they can kind of like release yeah. and move forward. And I, you also, the stuff you post is also about like going past, like in past lives, yeah. other situations oh. where you bring in other like players and characters. And yeah, because sometimes there are issues in past lives. I'll give you an example of one. There was, a, there was a woman who was having a really hard time. And she actually had an entity attached to her. Now, an entity is a soul who has died and has not gone home. Wherever you want to call home is, okay? I call it to the light, back to source. This entity did not go back home. In fact, it found her in this life as a baby and attached to her. We wanted to find out why this entity was attached. Well, this entity kidnapped her in a different life to make her his wife. Right? Mm -hmm. And he wasn't about to let her go. So when he died, it was, she was still his, mm -hmm. right? Well, he wouldn't let her go. Mm -hmm. So I went into his past life and found out what happened. And do you call that like you regressed into another regression? I have no idea. <laughs> so now we go to his past life yeah. to find out what was going on. Yeah. And what we ended up seeing is that he had kidnapped her from her father mm. okay so we had a conversation between him and the father yeah. All like why was the father so angry mm -hmm. with this guy well he had done the same and he had kidnapped his wife yeah. because that's what they did in those days mm -hmm. so the fact is we had to we had to resolve things between them before he would let her go. Okay, so talk about ent entities that you mm -hmm. 
see and deal with. It could be something kind of simple. Too. You're driving down the highway and you get into a car crash mm -hmm. and you die. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're decapitated. I'll give you that example because it happens a lot. Yeah. You wake up and you go, oh man, no, that's not fair. I have a whole life to live. I'm No. So somebody, you're walking around wandering, you don't go back home, and somebody's walking past you and they're in a bad mood. So your frequencies match, okay? Oh, there's an open spot because as soon as, when we put down our, when our frequencies are down, which is you're in a bad mood or you're angry or you're in anguish or anything where you're not happy, mm -hmm. you're now on a different frequency. Well, so are they, because they just lost their life. So now you're vulnerable and they attach to you. So now you're starting to feel a little bit different. You never drank before. I, I, could, I could go for a beer right now. Why are you drinking beer? I don't know. I just want to have a beer. Because this guy was a drunk driver and he liked drinking beer. He's using you to drink beer now. So he starts making your life miserable because he's miserable. Well, the only way that he is going to even understand what's going on is for me to talk with him. So we, we find out where he's lodged in maybe a big toe or something. We find out what the symptoms are. What, do you, what are you doing to Billy all this time? Oh, well, I'm making him sad. I'm making him go out and drink even though he doesn't like to drink. You know, I'm making him go to parties and he hates parties. And uh, I make him get angry with his siblings. Okay? Why? Because I'm angry. My life was over too early. So we have a little conversation. My technique is, is, is one that's used by other people too. You have a light inside of you. This is like your pilot light. This is what, this is your creator's light. We all are one. We all came from the creator. Find that light. Make it bigger. That feels good. Yeah, make it even bigger. That feels really good. Now their frequencies don't go together. I mean, you, you don't need to be there anymore. They know that now they can go home. Okay? In my practice, I use Archangels. I have Archangel Michael standing by. He's my go-to guy. I say, take his hand. He's going to take you right, back, right over there. We don't want him straying anywhere. <laughs> okay? You don't need to go with Archangels. You can go right into that light. But that's the way I do it. Okay? And then we fill that space with light, okay? So I use a lot of the archangels in my practice. Billy, I didn't believe in archangels when I first started in this, okay? I learned about archangels through my clients. That's how I learned. When people ask me, why do you do this? Because I'm learning from my clients. They're the ones who teach me. So, you know, there were times when, when I first started out where I would say, you know, who's here today? Who's helping? And they say, well, Archangel Raphael is here, Archangel Michael. I'm going, really? Yeah. 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 I didn't even believe in them. So you learn a lot too about... I'm learning as I go. Time, yeah. So if someone were to watch my first videos that I have up there, they're kindergarten. <laughs> I can't watch them. Yeah. Okay? I was just learning. And as each video comes out, my technique changes it evolves depending on what's being channeled through me what I'm learning the risks that I'm taking you know should I go left or should I go right today oh let's just dive in the middle yeah, yeah. And the, so when you talk about these entities it almost sounds like every, anyone can have them oh yeah and pretty <laughs> much everyone does yeah it's a part of personality that affects like People, how people live their life. Yeah. Some people so, don't, though. Some people come here and they're, they're good because yeah. they've, they've got a, you know, a really good energy. They've been working on themselves. But, yeah, they, they, yeah, they attach to you when you're in the lowest of low. Yeah. Uh, maybe you're exhausted. And that happened to me in Australia. Yeah. I was burning the candles on both ends. They were, I was on fire at the end. And crashing and burning, I had no energy. And I was getting hardly no sleep at night mm -hmm. and man I got a one got a hold of me and 
How is affect you? Oh, I was. I I thought I was going to die. Yeah. I have had at least three occasions where I thought I was going to die. Wow. Um, two of them, I felt I was going to have heart attacks. Wow. And I picked them up the high, at the hospital. Yeah. Wow. Because I'm sad, you know, I'm there with the loved ones, and maybe someone who's just had a heart attack and died wow. says, "Oh, look, here's a sad one." Pew. Yeah. You see? I mean, that's what makes it really eye-opening when you go to certain places where that exists like a lot more than people think. The story with the heart attack um, was kind of funny. My sister had just gotten open heart surgery and I went to visit her and she looked dead. Um, she really, she wasn't there. She was probably in council and I started feeling the actual symptoms of in my arm that I was going to have a heart attack mm. and, and I said, you know, I think I'll go home. I don't want to have a heart, heart attack in the hospital. <laughs> okay, didn't make sense to me, but that's how I was thinking. And I went home and I said, I'm going to have a heart attack today. I'm, I'm, this is going to be my last night. And I'm okay with it because I don't have a problem with death. And, you know, I fed the animals and I, I actually walked myself to the clinic across the street. And I walked in and I said, I'm going to have a heart attack. And they took my, my vitals. They took them twice. And I said, oh, oh, that must be bad. The doctor came back and said, you know, we took them twice because your vitals are perfect. Yeah. Which, why are you here? Yeah. It's that feeling. It's that feeling. Right. So I left the door unlocked that night. I said, because if I'm going to be found, they might, I don't want them breaking down my door. <laughs> and I went to bed. And my guides started telling me, watch, listen to your video until the spell is broken. Now, I knew what video that was. That was a video of my session as a Sasquatch, where I spend about four minutes laughing hysterically. Right? In the video? In the video. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so they said, keep listening to the video until the spell is broken. This is what I kept hearing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, I'm not in the mood to listen to that. I'm going to die tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's> <laughs> and they said, keep listening to the video. And I, so I started listening to it and I started laughing and laughing and laughing. Yeah. And then I said, okay, I'm going to go to sleep now. In the morning I felt great. Because your vibration's higher? My vibration changed. So then does that take that, does that entity then have to leave? Or? Well, because you're no fun. Yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not a match. Right. You've switched your radio station. Mm -hmm. So when people ask me, how do I get rid of these entities? Yeah. Well, have a blast. Live in bliss. Mm -hmm. Be have fun. Go out in nature. Mm -hmm. Do what you love to do. Laugh, sing, dance. Raise mm -hmm. your vibration. Right. Be happy. Mm -hmm. You know? Because if you're moping around, you're going to be a vibrational match to all this. So, bottom line is you have to follow your bliss. How old are you? Around one year. Let's, let's, let's find out what's happening there. I want you to see yourself with all of your senses being able to see through the veil. And let's see what's happening. Uh, what happens? It's just coming a very dark energy. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what that energy is. Where's it coming from? Are you the dark energy? It seems to me you're not very happy. Well, we can help you if you're not very happy. Oh. Would you like me to help you today? Oh. Yes. Okay. Well, you don't have to yell. I could hear you. you oh. Hear what, what's bothering you so much? What hurts you so much? I'm burning. You're burning. I'm burning. Okay, I'm going to throw some ice on top oh. of you. Feel the ice all over you. Feel that ice. Feel the ice. Feel that beautiful ice all over you. There you go. Do you feel that sensation of ice? Yeah. Ah. Now we can talk. Now we can talk. Yes. Are you male or female? Male. Male. Can you tell me your name, please? Isaac. Isaac. How old are you, Isaac? Old. Old? A thousand old. years. A thousand years. So, Isaac. Yeah. What year is it for you? 
Where are you? Year. Yes. Are you in a year? Hundreds of thousands of years away from now. Okay. So where is it, Isaac, that you are, that you were burning so much? You're not burning now. You have ice all over you. <coughs> What's going on, Isaac? <coughs> I have smoke in my lungs and I have smoke in my throat. Let's find out. I'm going to touch your shoulder, Isaac, and you'll feel better. Feel that? You'll be feeling better, Isaac. There you go. Isaac, why do you have this burning and the smoke in your lungs? Uh, what happened to you? I was locked into to, uh, in, in a mountain or something. Mm -hmm. and, um, was this like a volcano? Uh, or was it yeah. fire? Yeah, it might be that. Uh, what happened to you, Isaac? Did the volcano or something burn? I was locked in there by... By someone? Yeah, entities. Let's of, find out. So. Let's find out a little bit about that, Isaac. Tell me the story. What happened to you? I was the good guy. Yes. I was the good guy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you can tell me about it. What were you doing? I was healing... Mm -hmm. Healing a planet. You were healing the planet. Where did you come from, Isaac? Uh, I came from Source. Mm -hmm. I was sent to heal the planet. Yes. And there came intruders that wanted to rob the planet from mm -hmm. uh, minerals, I think. Yes. And I tried to stand against them, mm -hmm. protect the planet. But I mean, it was was just impossible. What did they... Well, first of all, how you were healing the planet? Were you using energy? Just energy. Energy. Did you have a body at that time, Isaac? Mm, kind of a light body. A light body. Yeah. So these beings, these entities that locked you up, where did they lock you? It was kind of a cave or mm -hmm. something in, in, in the mountain. Mm -hmm. Like... They closed it. I, I don't exactly know how they closed it. I think they had just... They were able to get the minerals to, to be fluid and then, and then close up the mountain. Mm -hmm. So I said, how did you get out of that mountain and find Liana? How did you find her? How did you get out? Because... Oh, how did I get out? Mm -hmm. After you... I left that kind of a light body that was... Or... Wow. What happened? I'm in there now. It's burning. I... It must have been more than a light body because... Mm -hmm. I had lungs and I have a throat, so... Mm -hmm. Take a look at yourself. What do you look like? <coughs> Yeah, I'm a young mm -hmm. man. You're a young man. And how did you heal? What did you use for healing? Ah, I could draw energy from source mm -hmm. into my hands. Yes. And spread it. And I could spread it so far. So, so far. Not mm -hmm. all over the, that planet. I had to travel <coughs> around the planet, but I could spread it really far. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it was so delightful. It was such a joy. Mm -hmm. So, Isaac, how do you know the soul of Liana? How do you know her? She's... She's my sister. Mm. I have been hurting her. You've been hurting your sister? Yeah. Why have you hurt your sister? By... Because I was transformed to this ugly energy mm. in that fire and I wanted to be with my sister and I didn't understand that I was taking all her power away. Mm. We had the same kind of power and I wanted to be in contact with that power. Mm -hmm. So what have you been doing to Liana all this time? 
What have you done to her since she was a baby? <sighs> I didn't understand that I that I was blocking her power. I just wanted to be close to her, mm -hmm. so I've been been with her and by with my darkness and bitterness and I blocked her because I I mean you saw my face when we connected, how angry mm -hmm. I was, and how... But you're not really that person, are you? No. You're actually very loving, aren't you? Yes. Isaac, I think you've forgotten who you really are. Yes, yes, yes. Would you like for, for me to help you remember? Yes, please. All right. So, Isaac, inside of you, there's a little spark of light. This is the light of source. Connect with that light again. <sighs> and let's make that light shine bright. And feel it getting as big as your whole body. How does that feel to be connected again? Acknowledging source once again. How does that feel, Isaac? It's so good. Mm -hmm. Keep making it bigger and bigger. Make yourself as big as a star. Feel your power. Feel that love, the connection directly from Source. Yes. Now, Isaac, do we need to be attached to your sister anymore? No. 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 So what would you like to tell Liana? about what you've been doing to her all these years, making her angry. I'm sorry. I didn't... I didn't realize I didn't understand what I was doing. I just, want, I just wanted to be with you. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to s feel your light. Mm, but you, you... You snuffed out her light, didn't you? Yes, mm -hmm. I did. I did. Okay. I, maybe I thought I could have mine back. Mm -hmm. Now you have yours back, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. Very good. So take a deep breath in. Rihanna, what would you like to tell Isaac, your brother? Oh, I forgive you. I forgive you, and I'm so happy that you have your light back mm -hmm. and the connection to Source. Very good. So now take a deep breath in, Isaac. Now that you have gotten that light back, I'd like for you to travel in time and go back to that moment when they trapped you and go ahead and uh -huh. do healing heal that body heal that body with that light send all of that light into that body feel what it feels like to be whole again yes yes it's, it's all right again mm -hmm. So now you can use that same light from Source to help your sister. Oh. Send your light into her and fill her with that love from yourself, from Source. Feel it going through her whole body. What does it feel like to be able to finally have your powers back and give her her hers. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So Isaac, are you ready to go back home again so that you can get your new orders? I'm yes, sorry. I love to. Very good. So go ahead and go up through the top of her head right here. Bye bye. Bye bye. And go ahead and follow that light directly. See you. See you sometime. Very good. May the light of the universe always accompany you, Isaac. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Very good. So now take a deep breath in and let me speak to the higher self. So now that we have discovered that Isaac was there taking her powers, how do you see the life of Leon now?
Uh, I think she needs some adjusting time. And it could be some uh, <coughs> separation feelings and some uh, uh, yeah, some adjusting time. She doesn't really, she's not really going to know in the beginning. Will she feel sad, like as if she's lost something? Uh, no, bad? not sad for over loss, but more. Hmm. How do I navigate now? Mm. Without their influence. Yes, and how do I? Uh, yes, yeah, probably she will feel like kind of a new person mm -hmm. that doesn't really know <laughs> who she is. Your technique, there's a, a personal way that you have your technique. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the other techniques that you know of? Or Aurelio Mejia has a different one that's called, um, well, Antonio calls it introspective hypnosis. And that is using different inductions. And an induction is a way in which you go into a trance. The way that you are hypnotized is, is this. When you are thinking normally, okay, your ego is like the gatekeeper. Think of it as you being a computer and your ego keeps the password to your hard drive, to all of your programs, okay, all of your files, okay. Now in order to get into your subconscious, you need to have the password, you need to break through. But the ego is very aware and alert and it says, no, no, you know, you're not getting in there. Do you have, you know, what's the password? So an induction will go past that gatekeeper and take you into the subconscious. There's many different ways of inducing hypnosis. There is just talking, where you can actually just talk a person into hypnosis. There's um, watch, watch the watch because your eyes will be following this. You can do the finger. I mean, there's many, many, many different ways of focusing your attention away from the ego so that you can get into your hard drive. You understand? Yeah, I love that. So, once you get into there, and there's many different ways, right. and I, I do many different ones, um, Aurelio Mejia has a certain method which is taking you back to memories. And I do that too on many of them. When people say, I can't see anything, I'll say, okay, well, let's go back to a memory. Mm -hmm. Okay? Once we take you back to a memory, any memory, it could be a birthday party that you were at when you were eight years old and all your friends were there and you were having a great time. It could be at your grandmother's funeral. Take you back to a memory. As long as the person starts imagining, then we can continue. Yeah. Okay? Because then it's like you're out of the ego. And yeah, the ego is saying, okay, we're just at the birthday party. Right. I, I could sleep for a while. He's okay. Yeah. Okay? So we kind of like sneak in that way. There's many different ways. So introspective hypnosis uses a combination of normal hypnotherapy techniques and memories. Okay? So we will take you to memories. Every hypnotherapist has different, you know, different ways of doing it. There's different methods, but you know, you can go to one um, memory and then you go back a little bit more. Okay, let's go back a little bit more. Let's go back a little bit more. And then finally you're in a past life. There's so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Do you find that there's, well, have you done enough with, let's say, one person that there's a certain amount of past lives or these memories, or can it be endless? The type of sessions that I do, and again, um, everybody's different, you know, but I have set an intention that my sessions are about the spiritual journey of forgiveness and the spiritual awakening. That's what my bag is, okay? 
Some people say, well, I'm really good at stopping smoking or right. losing weight. Yeah. That's not, there's, there's thousands and thousands of hypnotherapists that could help you lose weight and stop smoking. Mine, my intention and my mission here on earth is to awaken the masses during this time of ascension. So the people who come to me right now, the majority, not always, but the majority of them come because their higher self needs to talk to them, okay? They need to access that information. And so it doesn't matter if they go to past lives. We may or may not go to a past life. We may or may not go to this life. We may or may not talk to your higher self either. Mm -hmm. It's what the client needs. I had one recently where they brought me questions and the first thing the person saw were clouds, beautiful clouds, okay? Well, what happens next? Oh, there's stairs leading up through the clouds, okay? What next? I see a gate, wonderful. Oh, there's somebody behind the gate. Oh my God, it's Jesus. Jesus opens the gate, walks her up the stairs, beautiful temple. Who's there? The girl's father, who had died when she was four years old. During the whole session for the next hour, they had a conversation together. She said one thing to him, he said something back. He answered all of her questions. Did they go to a past life? No. Did they talk to the higher self? No. She needed to be with dad. It's very personal teach for Very personal. So the people who come here, if they expect their session to be like anybody else's, it's not. It's what they need. Some people need healing. Healing happens within your own mind and body. Okay? All I do is tell them, okay, what are you gonna use for to fix that? Yeah. I'll use white light. Yeah. Great. Go ahead, go for it. Yeah, it's kind of beautiful though, because you have um it's like you put them in a state so they can focus on what it's at they need to work on. Yeah. And I think that's that's the importance of what you do, pretty much. We are all God. Okay? We are all like drops of water in the body of God. Okay? So you were created in the image and likeness of God. You you are a creator, which means you have the power to do whatever you want with your life, to create your life. Which means when somebody is in a session, they have that power to do whatever they need to heal mind, body, and soul. You know, it's, I'm just reminding them. Exactly. That's, what, that's what they are. Yeah. And when you, when you as a facilitator for this type of session understand that and honor that in a person, it makes all the difference. When you understand that this session is about them taking care of themselves and, and get yourself out of the way, miracles happen to them, yeah. you know? That's so that's, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. And do you feel that since you're doing this, there's a part of you that's like, this is what you've always wanted to do? Is there something <laughs> deeper now? You know, in the last few sessions, I've been hearing that things are going to be changing. What well, is a big message for those that will, that may not come to hear the message <laughs> but we're going to put it out there because the vibration right it yes. touches everyone mm -hmm. so despite the way things look and and feel mm -hmm. right because there's a lot of low vibrating energy uh on the surface and near the surface of gaia and not just the not just on the surface but i'll call it the atmosphere of the surface right if you go beyond that atmosphere you don't feel that. Mm -hmm. um, if you go further enough in Gaia, you feel it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it is it is um, it is coming to an end. Mm -hmm. uh, now, those of you on Earth wanted to. It, well, do, let me actually. I'm going to change what I'm saying. I'm going to express it in a different way. It's already ended. Mm -hmm. It just has yet to manifest in your physical world but it's already done right mm -hmm. the bible has a has a there's a quote in the bible that says uh in something along the lines of faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen mm -hmm. right so in 
the manifestation, there is, so light workers, part of your mission is to grow the faith. It's not just about vibration. Um, it is, I mean, faith is a vibration, but, and, and, and if you feel more comfortable with trust, because faith, you have a, you have an issue with the word mm -hmm. faith, it is now time to, um, to let go of the attachment to some words and to delve deeper into the truth of those words so that you can go deeper in, uh, in, I'll, I'll say trusting, but in the faithing, because, right, a lot of light workers are saying, why hasn't it happened? We're tired. Oh man, we're tired. It hasn't happened yet. We're trying to make this happen. Is it really ever going to happen? It's already happened. <laughs> so now it's a matter of just, Hey, you know what? It's already happened. Right. In our, uh, loving ourselves, will help to expand our own consciousness. And as we do that inner work, not just that outer work, but really that inner work and not the inner work you think you have to do. It's really, um, it's really getting comfortable with truth, getting comfortable with truth, right? And not bits of truth, right? Just with truth and more and more truth will unfold. And as that unfolds, more and more will manifest in the physical. And yes, there is a collective that is vibrating in a certain way, but the more, right, it's not just the outward work anymore. And it's not just the inner work, the way you see it. If you're just meditating, please add prayer. If you're just praying, please add meditation. Please allow those things to work in tandem and see that everything you do, everything you think, everything you be, right? Think of it in that circular motion. Right? And think of it as the wave in the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. I think Eric Butterworth, I think it was Eric Butterworth said that God is in you like water is in a wave. Get comfortable with the word God. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't have to use it, but be okay with it. Heck, you can call it tiddlywinks. All right? So in that, in that, that, that being, your vibration will extend, extend and expand a thousandfold and, and it will have even more of a, we'll call positive impact on many. And as you continue to do this, not only will you quote unquote ascend, but you will help more of those that are stuck in that lower vibration, uh, remove their feet from the quicksand, remove their feet from the mud and the muck, and they too will elevate. And you will also help Gaia do what it's going to do anyway. It's just, Gaia could, Gaia could be gone, right? She's waiting for y'all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the bottom line. And she's doing this out of love, right? And you're getting a lot of help. You already know that, right? So, um, not only continue to do what you do, but just up level it. It's weird because I'm the last person you would think of me doing this. Really? Last person. Okay. No one would ever, all my school friends would understand this because they grew up with me. Yeah. I was the shyest, most introverted kid there was, okay? Um, the worst insult for me as a child was when I would go places with my parents, they would say, go play with the kids. That killed me because I didn't like playing with the kids. I didn't like kids. I wanted to be by myself or my parents. Don't, don't make me play with those beings, yeah. okay? I cried until the fourth grade in school. Everything scared me, okay? So doing this, meeting people, helping people like this, was the last thing that I had in my mind that I'd be able, to, that I would, I would be doing. But it makes sense because how would I be able to empathize with people had I not walked that path 
of being in so much pain, of being so introverted, painfully introverted, how would I be able to understand them when they said, I don't, wanna, I don't, I don't like being here, okay? I felt, I felt that pain and I grew out of it. And I know that we are all here. We're all spiritual warriors at this time for a reason. And it's time to up your game now. Yeah. So when they come to me, it's like, okay, it's like an activation code. Okay, you're done. Go. Yeah. Do your job. Yeah. But it seems to be evolving more and more. You know, obviously, I told you it started as a life coach. Mm -hmm. What now? Yeah. I, I don't even think about it. I just fall <laughs> into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fall into whatever it is that my guides mm -hmm. don't want to tell me about yet. <laughs> Surprise you, right? Well, because I was always a no person. You, oh, but do you want to do? No. Do you want to go? No. Yeah. Do you want to meet? No. <laughs> you know, it, I was always a no person. I always had a no. You know? Mm -hmm. Here, I have somebody to meet you. No. Yeah. No. Would you like to go out? No. And now you find yourself. And now I'm finding myself that I have to be a yes person. I'm having to travel, I'm having to do things that are breaking through mm -hmm. that fear mm -hmm. of, of anything, right. you know? I want to be an example that you can be whatever you think you are, but you're a lot bigger and, and more than you are. And then look what you're doing now. Because of that. <gasps> exactly. I, I felt that the past two months where I feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm, <laughs> Or I could be doing more. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like there is more energy that's pushing me, yeah. guiding me to like meet you and have the mm -hmm. time to yeah. sit and do this. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, do you want to talk more about that? Yeah. For the last few years, and it's getting faster and faster, there is an urgency. You know, I know I came here to do something. I know I have an important mission to do, but I'm running out of time here and you haven't given me my, my, my orders yet, <laughs> you know? I forgot or I lost my paper. So people are feeling lost like they're saying, there's something happening and I know I have to be a part of it, but what am I supposed to be doing? What's my purpose? I'm just sitting here doing nothing. What am I supposed to do? I know it's important. So at this time, it seems, and this is what's coming out of my, my sessions, Gaia, which is the Earth, is ascending to a different frequency, okay? She's already done it. She's, it's, it's already happened, okay? But there was a call out there saying she needs help with this. The people on Earth are not getting it. They need to raise their vibration. So we need to call all of you folks out there who have already, you already got it, and let's go to Gaia, let's go to Earth, because the only way we can do that is being born there, okay? And you guys know that you just have to be there. You just have to be there, okay? So they, everybody knew what they were supposed to do before they came here. They knew they just had to be here to hold the light, okay? It's like, it's like your, 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 cam, your camera equipment. What is the tri tripod supposed to be doing? Just hold the light. Well, that's, that's all I have to do? Just hold the light. Yeah, but it seems insignificant. Mm -hmm. Hold the light. It's much more than you think, yeah. Right? It's much more. So right now we have thousands and thousands or millions of people around the world who have been born at this time to raise the vibration mm -hmm. so that it starts to spread. It's almost like we're all seeds mm -hmm. on the planet and all of these seeds have been buried and this, this light is now allowing them to grow. And then when people, for example, see a video of mine, they go, oh my God, I just woke up. Mm -hmm. Well, the seed has sprouted. Yeah. Now it's up to them to grow. And use that information and knowledge to figure out what they need to do. Yeah. It, it's already in them. Yeah. I mean, all they have to do is connect mm -hmm. with source. Mm -hmm. So everybody's feeling this urgency right now that time is going by very, very quickly, which it is. And what am I supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. And most times I hear from sessions, just be. Yeah. Just hold that higher vibration. Just have fun. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, but I'm supposed to be doing something. Yeah. You're a human being. Mm -hmm. Just be. Mm -hmm. Be happy. Yeah. No, I need to do something. Just 
be happy. When you're happy, you're emitting that light. And that light helps raise the vibration of another. Children know that. You watch a child at play and they're always happy, right? Just being around a little kid will make you happy watching them. That's what we're supposed to be doing, having fun. Would you say anything to those people that find that that's actually difficult for them? Like, is it maybe that I think from this info that you're giving that it's not really them that's holding them? They're just attracting maybe these beings or entities that, that you know. Them. It could be, but the more you live in fear and the more you um, dwell on your past, for example, it's going to hold you there. A lot of people can't get out of their hole because they're not living in the moment, okay? Children live in the moment. They could care less about what happened yesterday or tomorrow. They're, they care about what's happening right now. So do animals. That's why we love animals so much. Your dog. doesn't matter how long you've been away. You could have been away five minutes. The moment you walk back in, you're a rock star, okay? They live in the moment of now. If these people would stop looking at the back behind them and enjoy the moment of now and stop worrying about the future and live in the moment of now, then they can get out of their rut. Okay? Mm -hmm. Turn off the TV. Yeah. The TV is just feeding you. So many distractions too. You just have to focus on you. The TV <laughs> is, is just programming you to, to stay in that state of fear and Right, yeah, right? Sure. But the moment you turn off the TV and you start living your life more like your dog, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Enjoy your food, mm -hmm. you know, take a nap. Mm -hmm. Once you start enjoying life in the moment, you realize there's nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. As long as my, my tummy is full and yeah. I get to sleep and... I'm with people I love yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. All of a sudden, time changes. And you start manifesting as the creator that you are right. from that point rather than backwards or forwards, yeah. you know? Yeah. When you are in the moment of now, you really are, you're so centered and, and it's almost like being in prayer, you know, when, when you're just enjoying the moment and those thoughts go out there and they start creating. And all of a sudden you notice synchronicities that crazy stuff crazy. numbers mm -hmm. sequential numbers you look at your clock 555 five, five. really mm -hmm. then you know you put it down you forget about it, and you pick it up again wait a minute how'd that happen mm -hmm. it's you know yeah, like right time. It's crazy. Yeah. funny things that happen this morning I was given a, a beautiful gift whenever I see a feather to me that's my indication that my angels are with me, okay? And I find them in the weirdest places, you know? Like places where you know cats didn't chew up a bird or anything like that, you know? You find a feather somewhere and you go, H how, right? And this morning, I was changing, and I looked at the, the sweater I was putting on, and I said, what is this white thing sticking out of my sweater? And I looked and I pulled it out and there was this beautiful feather inside of my sweater. I don't have down anything. There's no reason for that to be in my sweater. It was almost woven into my sweater like saying, we want to make sure it doesn't get out. A beautiful little feather was in my sweater. I was jumping around the room, hysterical, because it was so wild. The fact is, the more you notice things like this, the more they're going to give you gifts, right? Why would they give you gifts if you don't appreciate it? So when you acknowledge that you understand that that was a gift, because it's almost like them saying, we're here with you. There's nothing to worry about, you know, nothing to worry about. We're always here. Whenever you need something, it's going to be there for you. Mm -hmm. So just be.
be happy. Ascension now to the 2024. Mm -hmm. From now to 2024? Yes. Mm -hmm. So is it going to happen in small phases? Some will jump. Mm -hmm. She will remain, continue to work, take her time. Okay. And when you say some will jump, can you describe what that means? Yes. Some will jump spiritually. Mm -hmm. Some will leave their body. Some will make a leap spiritually, dimensionally. Mm -hmm. Some have already done so. Hmm. So in this ascension, do we have a physical body? Those who choose to stay with their meat body can do so. Okay. And where do we go when we ascend? Wherever you can. Hmm. Some will stay in third. Some will battle it out in four. Some will go on to fifth, mm -hmm. sixth. You go where you are guided, your guide tells you. Mm -hmm. In these other dimensions, are there earths there, like this one? No. No. Much more peaceful, mm. growth is much slower. Takes longer lessons, mm -hmm. longer, much longer. Here is very intense. Because many people wonder if they're going to have to die in order to ascend. Some will. Yes, okay. Some are ready. Mm -hmm. All those will go where they are supposed to go. Okay. Is there anything for us to do to prepare for this ascension? Go within. Mm. Is that where the meditation comes in? Yes, you have to open your heart. You cannot get balanced without opening your heart. Mm -hmm. And when you open your heart, what does that do for you? Makes you vulnerable, mm -hmm. makes you wise, makes you accept, mm -hmm. makes you let it be, makes you whole. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're guarded, your heart is closed? Usually, yes. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we can gauge how open our heart is. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. What's the best way? You can feel it. Mm -hmm. Look at your responses. Look at how you handle your life. Look at how you deal with others. Look at how well you've loved. Mm. When you get done with your body, that is your only question that you must answer. How well have I loved? And I just want to talk about a little bit more in the videos that you post. Yeah. Because um, you post some really amazing information yeah. for people. Yeah. That is from the higher source. So you talk about like your over soul that's connected to yeah. everything. Um, how does that information, when you put it out, how, does it, how are people receiving it? What do you think that... Well, first of all, my friend Antonio pushed me to take the videos out because I didn't want to put videos out because, hey, that's very personal mm -hmm. stuff and what are people going to think and, you know, I'm not very good at it and, and what if they're going to criticize me for, you know, the technique and what if I'm not doing it right? You know, you have all these things that the ego is feeding you. And Antonio basically pushed me and said, no, put them out there. So the first one that I put out there, I said, you know what, yeah, people don't really know what hypnosis is. So I took my Sasquatch video, okay, 
the one that it was a past life regression that was done on me mm -hmm. my first past life regression which was really goofy and crazy because I was in shock that I saw myself as this seven foot huge Bigfoot so that was the first one I put out there it wasn't a video but it was um, an audio which I put pictures to it so I put that out there and people really like really reacted to it positively the reason I put it out there was because I wanted them to know what a session could be like if they've never had a session so that was the reason and Aurelio Mejia puts out like thousands of videos so people before they come to him already know his method and it's nice for you to already know what your hypnotist is like before you go to them if you go to someone you don't know you have no idea if you're going to resonate with them so by them watching my technique if they don't like me go somewhere else okay but if you resonate with me okay you know what's going to happen are you willing to share information about her past lives Yes. Mm -hmm. so she wanted to know which past lives she's had that most relate to her current life and her use of the light language. Can you show her a picture in her mind of this life? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's during Christ time. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened there. It's uh, very dusty. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the buildings are like sand, mm -hmm. like sandstone. They all have like rounded arches. The street is narrow. People are crying. They're very upset. What's happening? <laughs> it's Jesus. What's happened? <sighs> He's being beaten. Everybody, everybody's upset. <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> I'm with his mom. What is your name there? <laughs> My name is Mary. Mm -hmm. Mary, what's happening? <laughs> They're going to crucify my son. What happens next, Mary? <laughs> they didn't tell me. Who didn't tell you, Mary? God didn't tell me. God didn't tell me he would have to die this way. Does God tell you everything, Mary? I thought so. Mm -hmm. How does God communicate with you, Mary? He talks to me. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel now that he didn't tell you this? I understand. Mm -hmm. Because it was beyond to know. Mm -hmm. No mother wants to know that in advance. Do you? No. Mm -hmm. So what does God tell you now? He says he feels no pain. He's protected. Mm -hmm. What about you? My heart, 
my heart. <laughs> What happens next? He tells me he's not going to die. Mm -hmm. He's not going to die. He's coming back. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? <sighs> Relief. Mm -hmm. Relief. How does God tell you this? I hear him. Mm -hmm. What else does he tell you? He wants me to know that my son's soul was created for this. His soul was created for this? Yes. Mm -hmm. That it was a path he chose. It doesn't make it any easier for you. No. But he's going to live. God tells me that he will live forever. Mm -hmm. In the hearts of men. Far beyond anyone's understanding at this time. What is your role in this, Mary? How is it that God chose you to be his mother, to endure this? I was favored. Mm. I chose love. I lived a life of love. So as I started putting out these videos, I wasn't putting them out for Informate, like, look, you know, look what I can do. Like no, no, it was basically like this is an experience that you that people have. Yeah. It was really show and tell. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for a purpose right. other than saying this is what a hypnosis session feels like. So my sessions are basically eavesdropping sessions. Right. Okay, I don't do it. I don't put the session out in any way for the pleasure of my audience. I don't put it out there for them to, it's not for them to experience. My session is about me and my client. The questions that are asked are between me and my client. So is the experience. If they happen to be watching, okay. But I'm not telling them what to think. I'm not telling them how to respond. They are just experiencing what I'm experiencing. And what happens to them is their business. Okay? But what happens with a session is we record it, and this is something that Dolores Cannon was adamant about. You record the session because any, anything that's happened in the session, any frequency changes or anything, are recorded in the session. You and I are vibrational beings. So whatever happens, it's vibration. But what's happening is that not only are my clients getting affected, but anybody who's watching is being affected too. So they're getting the benefit. If there's any vibrational changes or any, any emotional healing that the person has had, if it resonates with them, they're getting the results. But I'm not putting it out there for the benefit of them. Yeah. It's just that this is great information. If it helps you. If it helps you, it helps you. If it doesn't help you, move on. One thing that's great about your videos, like I wouldn't have met some of the people that I'm working with. Right. On my site because of it. And exactly. Like that, that These are normal people, and I tell my clients, this probably may not go up on YouTube because like eight out of ten of my sessions do not get published mm -hmm. because they're very personal. Yeah. Okay? But if it happens to be something really cool, I'll ask you later. Yeah. But don't go into the session thinking this is going to be on YouTube right. because then your ego is going to be saying, oh, I shouldn't cry, my mascara is running. Okay? 
No. <laughs> this is not about that. This is what it is. Listen, when, I am in, when I'm in, under hypnosis, I cry like a baby. I know I'm hypnotized because it starts to run, okay? And it's normal. People have drippy nose. People, but we're human. So when, you're having, when I'm having a hypnosis session, this is, this is the pure soul. And I think what people love about watching is that it's the only time you get to see someone pure. You, can, you fall in love with them because we fall in love with this when the person is vulnerable. And I get the pleasure of doing that every single day. I get to have an intimate you know, few hours with my, with my client every day. It's a beautiful experience, soul to soul. So going back to my original life coaching, this is beautiful because I get inside there. I see them as a soul. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's, yeah, it's like a huge thing that I feel like we're trying to do is reach people in that way. So it's yeah. Not, so it's something they can actually know that they can do it themselves. And you have Absolutely. to kind of get them there or you have yeah. to lead, like you said. Yeah, like, yeah. But the more that you see that, the more that you watch the videos, I believe, the more you realize there's people like me out there and there's good people out there and they're all scared. And if I could just understand their soul, I could make the changes myself. I could be more vulnerable. I could be more honest. I could rip that mask off of me that, you know, I don't need anybody's help and ask for help and you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's what the, the, the videos are doing is it's allowing people to see, to eavesdrop on a very personal moment of vulnerability and understand how vulnerable everybody is. Yeah, yeah. inspiration. Yeah. And it's so cool because you also attach the like spiritual part of it that I feel like is very helpful for people that yeah. also want that extra mm -hmm. feeling like, like you said, like a soul, your soul, but also connecting to so much more than that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's what makes you so unique and so powerful. Yeah. Because you get the, the healing and the, like you said, the pureness of it. Mm -hmm. But then you hear the spiritual part of it and you're just like, oh my God, I resonate to like everything because it's so yeah. much bigger than... Because we are all spiritual beings. All of us. Mm -hmm. All of us are spirits walking around in this body. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And your higher self your guides, your angels have been guiding you your whole life to this, to this moment that you are in the moment of now. And they're cheering you on, they're pushing you and they're pushing you. And when you get it, oh my God, it's like, it's, it's undescribable. It's undescribable. Yeah. yeah. But it's so powerful and real and deep. Yeah. It's very, very deep. And you don't have to, you don't have to do much to get there. Yeah. Just be. Yeah. That's very true. The cool thing is that the more you use your imagination, the more you create. Yeah. Because we create from our imagination. Mm -hmm. So isn't that great that thousands of people, when they're watching these videos, are now becoming more, better creators? Yeah. Now that's what I've been learning. It's like your thoughts are the power that we have. <clears throat> yeah. That's like our biggest power. And that's why... And that's what's being you, suppressed from yeah, us. Yeah, that's why you realize that. That's why we're force-fed thoughts that aren't positive right. and lack of. And right. then once you realize it, it's like, oh, yeah. you can experience the complete opposite of that. Right. And that's so, what's super... That's powerful. what's great. You yeah. know, that's why books were so powerful before. Mm -hmm. That's why audiobooks are also powerful. But when you're fed stuff as to what you they want you to think it looks like, then you can't use your imagination. It's very simple. Yeah. Life is supposed to be simple. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be complicated. And the only reason we make it complicated is because we're looking outside of ourselves yeah. for validation. Yeah. We are afraid people are judging us. We're judging them. Mm -hmm. Just be. You're unique. Mm -hmm. There's nobody else on earth or anywhere like you. Yeah. So once you um, accept that, mm -hmm. once you understand that no one is going to be like you, yeah. and you, it empowers you. So I'm not trying to be like any other hypnotist out there, okay? 
I, yes, I take techniques from here, from there, because just like any great chef or cook, you know, you take, oh, you know, you know, I'll learn how to saute a little bit better. You know, you take different techniques, but when you are doing it your way, with your connection, that's the beauty of it. I am changing the way I do things uh, now just for my own sanity. Um, like last year, I opened up my calendar and I, I booked a whole year in advance. And I've had to switch those sessions constantly because my life changes. I've, I've got things going on in my life that I don't talk about that I have to take care of. And um, so I keep having to switch. So I'm only going to be opening up little by little. I'm going to be helping Antonio Sangio do some training. So we're actually doing, going to be doing live training on introspective hypnosis. So that's going to be great for people who um, want to learn uh, Antonio's technique and also I'll be there collaborating with him um, jumping in just to learn more right? yeah so these are people who want to learn what we do we'll be doing more of that too so this is new you know people have wanted me to do training and I, I can't train them to be me but we can train them to be themselves yeah. this is a time of spiritual awakening and everybody has to step it up okay stop stop hiding behind judgment, stop being afraid of what other people are thinking about you, be yourself, and help other people wake up. And just by being you and being happy is all you need to do, you know? Be of service to other people, really. People want help and be there, be there for them. Be service to other, be kind to other people, very important, be kind. You know, open the door for somebody. Uh, you know, if you see someone who need, is short of change, give them some change in the supermarket or whatever it is. Just be a human again. And it feels so good. It feels so good. So uh, that's really all it is. Just be kinder to yourself. Eat well, sleep well, you know, enjoy your life. There's nothing for us to do but to be happy. Shine your light.